Hi there. Howdy. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is our first time using this platform, so I was honestly a little bit nervous when I put that turn camera on button for, for what was about to happen. <laughs> yeah. All right. So welcome, everybody, to the official Iron Viz kickoff. Seasons greetings, Archana. It's great to be with you. <laughs> Viz the season. <laughs> Viz the season. It's my favorite season of the year, Iron Viz season. Um, we should probably introduce ourselves. Um, yes. You want to go first? <laughs> sure. Uh, so my name is Mark Bradbourne. I'm a national solutions engineer with Tableau. I recently celebrated my fifth anniversary with the company. Uh, Three-time Iron Viz Sue Visor, and last year was blessed and honored to be part of the judging panel. Uh, I also lead a community project called Real World Fake Data. Nice. Good to have you, Mark. And my name is Archana Ganeshlingam. I am a programs and communications senior lead here at Tableau. So I work in Mark's team um, doing all things comms and programs. Um, I'm a two-time IMVIS host, and just before COVID, I also hosted IMVIS Europe back in the day. And I guess my claim to fame and like why I get get to do these fun things is um, back in 2019, I was our internal EMEA Viz Games champion. So I earned, we don't do a trophy, we do like a belt, like wrestlers, so I earned my belt. <laughs> you gotta, You got to show me that belt sometime. I want to see that. So we just have one, so it gets passed around the team. So I actually don't know whose house it's at now. <laughs> oh, wait. I actually might have it. We'll, we'll talk later. <laughs> we'll talk later. You might have to send that back to me. I want it back. <laughs> All right. So, so why are we here? So we're here to kick off the IMVIS qualifier contest. Now, I know lots of you have participated before or at least heard of IMVIS, but for anyone that's new to the Tableau community and data fam, IMVIS is Tableau's data visualization competition. It's your opportunity to kind of show the best of your skills using Tableau um, and um, present your final visualization live on stage at Tableau conference. Um, this year, the qualifier theme is entertainment and we'll go into a little bit of what that means later on, because I know there's been some questions um, on socials about what what is entertainment? It's more of a philosophical question um, as as it relates to IMVIS this year. Mark, do you have anything to add? Um, as I say, we'll get into the topic in a little bit, because I think it's really broad, but I think it opens up a lot of opportunity for a lot of people to get really creative, which to me is the best part about the IMVIS feeder season. All right, so why why participate in IronViz? Well, every qualifying entry gives you the opportunity to challenge, grow, and just you know really expand your data skills. And honestly, it's a lot of fun to do. Uh, you'll be featured in the online Viz gallery. You'll get a LinkedIn badge, and you can get scores and feedback from the qualifier judges. The top 10 from all of the feeders will get recognition as an IronViz top 10 finalist and a $200 swag voucher from the Tableau store. And then the top three will participate in San Diego, April 15th, which is 194 days from today. Uh, <laughs> not, not that, that I'm counting. counting. <laughs> uh, the winner gets a $15,000 cash prize and then a donation uh, to a nonprofit of their choice. They'll get free registration for Tableau Conference and, of course, the fame and glory that goes along with it. Now, if I think back to, like, my qualifier, um, like, the first time I ever did it was, like, 2017. And one of the best things that I got from that was, honestly, some of the network I built through the Tableau community getting people to give me feedback as I was building it. And I've already seen people out on X and on LinkedIn offering help for feedback know that those are not just willy-nilly, uh, you know, conversation pieces. Everybody in the data fam loves to help. So by all means, if you need that help, take them up on that offer. All right, let's get into the finals. The first place winner, as mentioned, wins $15,000 of a cash prize. That nonprofit donation is $10,000. And then, of course, the free Tableau conference registration. 
Second and third place win $6,000 each and a $4,000 donation to a nonprofit of their choice. Pretty amazing prizes. And as we say in Iron Viz, either you win or you learn, you do not lose. So by all means, let's get in there and get, you can't, you can't win if you don't get in the feeder. So you've got to go, you got to do this. What do you have to lose, right? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> there is no lose in Iron Viz. There is no lose. Um, so Mark, you and I can't actually enter the competition, sadly, because we're employees. I would, I would like to win all that money. Um, but if we could, what would you do with your $200 swag voucher? I'm really Ooh. curious. What's well, your wish list? I mean, I have a ton of t-shirts. <laughs> you don't um, need more. <laughs> I don't need t-shirts. So, I, but I'm always good for sweatshirts. Um, there's always fun little office knickknacks, you know, little, uh, things for the desk that are are good um so yeah i just have to peruse and see what's there what about you what would you do with a 200 dollars swag card <laughs> it's like a shopping spree i i'm in the same boat as you i don't think i would get a t-shirt i have plenty i wear one a day basically <laughs> um i think i would go for one of the i think last year they had a um like a rainbow fanny pack like all different colors oh yeah um, that was pretty cool i'm like big on my crossbody bags. Um, so I feel like that would be a fun one to have. Yeah. And I think I just saw a new backpack, which I've got more backpacks than I have backs, but <laughs> I love a good backpack. Add them to the collection. You'd laugh if you saw my floor. <laughs> All righty. Um, so we mentioned that the theme this year for the qualifier contest is entertainment. Um, this means whatever you find entertaining, whether that's movies, TV shows, Hollywood stars, sports team, hobbies, video games, anything that captures your attention can be an entry. Um, we've also had some questions about whether or not you can, whether or not you're limited to using the Data Plus movies or Data Plus TV data sets. Um, you're not limited to those, but of course those are available to you if that's the theme you wanna go down. Um, Petra's asked books, Books is entertainment, I think. So many books are, get turned into movies and TV shows. So I yeah. say yes. <laughs> oh, Archana, I know we can't enter, sadly, as we, <laughs> but what would be your dream data set when you're thinking about entertainment? What would you do? I think I would want to analyze my own Spotify data because I like my Spotify wrapped, but I would love to like get into it. Well, as someone who recently downloaded their Spotify extended data, like it covers like, well, for me, it covered like, like 13 years and some early <laughs> stuff is pretty embarrassing. I'm like, wow, my music tastes have changed. I think, uh, I think my current stuff is pretty embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, there's a website called setlist.fm, mm -hmm. which there's an API, which you can pull data from and you pull like tour information and like how often songs have been played on tour oh yeah I, I think that would be fascinating so i like i said i think it's wide open as far as like what you consider entertainment mm -hmm. i mean you can even yeah sports um movies music uh, even iron viz like let's take the video of iron viz <laughs> and <laughs> let's analyze the different frames Analyze every bad joke from me and Andy. Oh, that's a big data set. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, let's get on to the judging criteria. So um, each year, these have stayed consistent throughout the years. Um, our judges will be looking at the design analysis and storytelling of your visits. Now, I'm not going to read through this slide. That's pretty boring. So we'll pause here just so you can take a quick quick screenshot so you have it to hand when you're building your viz and you can check that you're kind of hitting those criteria and making sure that you're covering all three. They have equal weighting. Um, so make sure that you're not um, focusing on design, for example, and compromising on maybe the other two. Yeah, it's always it's always a challenge to get that that right balance of the three, but the balance of the three is really what brings it home. Cool. I think we have some panelists joining us. We do. We are extremely lucky that we have three of last year's feeder contests, top 10 finalists. We've got Ellie, we've got Diego, and we've got Nicole with us. Hey, y'all. How are you? 
I'm doing well. How are you? Excellent. Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm hi. Bevy's playing ball. Excellent. Season's greetings to you. <laughs> um, all right. So um, let's let's get into some questions. Archana, do you want to kick us off? Yeah. Um, I guess for each of you, you entered the qualifier contest last year, and we'll show those visits as well while we're talking. So everyone watching can kind of contextualize like who you guys are against your entries as well. Um, but can you share your history with Ironviz? So how many times you've entered and why you entered, let's say maybe that very first time for all the first timers um, joining us today. Uh, let me pick on someone because otherwise it's going to be an awkward time. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, do you want to go first? You're first on the on the slide. All right, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily de Padua. Um, that's my beautiful love across the eras viz, my love letter to Taylor Swift as a Swifty. <laughs> um, so my Iron Viz history, I have entered three times in Iron Viz since 2020. So 2020, 2022, and this 2024. Um, I'm kind of like the Olympics where I enter literally every other year. I always take an off year. So we'll see if I make it to the finish line because this is technically my off year. Um, but I also have the flex to say that in 2020, 2022, and 2024, I'm three for three in making it to the top 10. So ah, that's impressive. Big flex, yeah. Um, something I, it's a badge I wear with a lot of honor. Um, and so this year, usually I enter, I entered in 2020 because I just wanted to finish a viz. I was in like a real rut. I couldn't, I couldn't push a viz to Tableau Public at all. So the theme that year was health. And I don't know, something about the Iron Viz, pan, the timing of Iron Viz, the spirit of it, how everyone's so game to help you out with feedback. It just makes it such, and I'm just a little competitive. Like who loves a little competition? Me, um, that was the one that got me to the finish line and I'm very proud of it. But um, yeah, I think that's it, right? Those are your questions. Yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, Diego, what are you thinking about this year for entertainment? Are you going to uh, throw your hat in the ring? Any potential topics in mind? I uh, Yeah, I mean, that's the idea. The idea is to, to enter. I mean, you know, every time that r and is announced, I guess you, you get it with all the intentions of participating. Hopefully, you know, I get to, to do it. But uh, following a bit on the topics of what I've been doing, always trying to stick with something around Latin America, I'm thinking Latin American music and kind of like the rise of it. I just need to, to find the data. Hopefully something around billboard data. I'm able, maybe Spotify can, can get something. Very cool, very cool. That's cool. I love the specificity of it. I like the theme that you always stay close to home and represent um, your, yeah, your community. Try to do it. I mean, my first Iron Beast, uh, I put like a button to translate it. It was the intention to do it on the second, but the second is also quite text heavy and I was doing it, <laughs> you know, last day. So couldn't couldn't put it, but yeah, it's, it's you know, trying to to keep it like the one piece in the year that I tried to do it, Latin American. Nice, that's very cool. Yeah. Um, and finally, we'll come to you, Nicole. Um, what's a couple of new skills that you picked up participating in IMVIZ <laughs> last year and maybe years prior? Yeah, iron, I use Iron Viz as my like focus to learn something, and that's why I enter. So last year I was going to learn dynamic zone visibility. That was like I was going to learn it. Iron Viz was a great place to do it. And I want to say like 80 to 90 percent of the things on this viz are controlled by dynamic zone visibility. So I was like, I'm gonna learn it, I'm gonna master it. Um before then I was really focusing more on design. So like I remember my first year I was it was white space. It's like, we'll learn this idea of white space. The next year was more like building to a grid. Um, I don't remember the third one. I've entered four times, but then yeah, last year was that technical, like I'm going to get this skill down so that I can use it. Nice. I love that. I think it's, I think it's really cool because like with the three we've seen today, they're not necessarily dashboards you might be building at work. So it's that opportunity to really hyper fixate on like the skill. And hopefully, Nicole, maybe you've used it at work since. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the beautiful thing about, you know, having the Iron Viz feeder to like learn something new and, and flex your creativity is because a lot of times that stuff comes right back to work and you're able to apply it in the real world. 
Um, again, yeah. it's, it's such a great learning opportunity. So, all right, so we're gonna go lightning round down the three of you in the same order. So, uh, Emily, you start, where do you go for inspiration? I honest, I'm throughout the year, especially for Iron Viz, I'm just like, my favorites tab is just madness. It's just like a hoarder's den of just like every Viz under the sun that I'm like, that looks really cool, great job. Um, it's like horrifying sometimes when I try to find a specific biz in there because I was like, there's like 500 bizes favorite <laughs> in this tab. Um, so honestly, I go through Tableau Public for like my absolute like biz inspirations. And I just go through that tab and like sometimes I'll get this idea and I'll like my brain will lead to like an, a, a, a biz that someone had done and then I'm off to the races. But in terms of ideas, it's like it really depends on the theme. Like this year's theme for entertainment really, um, really worked well for me because I'm such a big like TV music fan. Um, and so, but you know, the way I fell in love with TV and music was like living my life. So sometimes like, I also have to like sit back and like figure out like, okay, like what are certain things that I could find a data set for that is a really cool topic that I'm game to do for Iron Biz. Like, and sometimes I'll have ideas that just sit in the back of my head for like, sometimes years, like that Taylor Swift biz you all saw, I had been sitting on like a dream of doing a Taylor Swift biz since like 2019. I just never found the right data set, never found the right theme, never found that spark. And then when that spark happens, like it's beautiful. And I wish you all to have that spark. This you, just, you just had to get in the right era. Yeah, yeah, I had to wait for her to do all 10 eras. Yeah. And then she, of course, drops an 11th album, like right after I submit this. So it's just never going to end. Awesome. All right, Diego, inspiration. Um, yeah, for me, I for Iron Beast, I, I see Iron Beast a bit of different to some of the other pieces that I tend to do or see. So I go a bit beyond Tableau Public and think a lot of like media, so especially news sites. Uh, I try to always kind of think of the story of like, okay, there's a narrative and then how the visuals play with this narrative. And because this will go to like a bigger audience, I always try to kind of think how you see these type of stories in, in media. And then for design, I actually go into websites of like design agencies uh, to see how they play with color, with fonts. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of like how I've been doing my two entries for, for Iron Beast. So sometimes going a bit, beyond Tableau Public and, and trying to think of like, okay, how am I going to craft a narrative? And also the media as well sometimes inspires me to kind of get the stories and, and understand, you know, if I'm going to talk about Latin American music, what type of stories currently exist there that maybe I can then support with some data analysis. Very cool. And lastly, Nicole. Um, like Emily, I definitely hoard visits on my Tableau Public favorite. I will say for inspiration of like topic and maybe bigger picture design, um, once I get an idea, I like, I, I just hone in on it. So my background is in research. So I do like a lit review on my topic. And so for like my big designs, I'd go to the websites. I try to figure out how can I bring that story into the design? So like Dr. Who's using all the colors, but then also like I wanted to show each song. I'm like, okay, I'll put it in the shape of a TARDIS. You know, that's where some of those design pieces come in. But then once we're at the point of like building charts and stuff, I love going to Tableau Public and seeing like, who's done, who's looked at this topic, who's looked at that topic, how did they, how did they show it, and how can I kind of use that to spark my creativity? Pinterest is also a really good place for some design. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nice one. Um, let's do this one um, lightning round because I think everyone cheated a little bit there. <laughs> so this one maybe just in one word or two if it's a longer number. How much time did you spend building your feed of this? Like, and we'll go in the same order. So Emily, Diego, Nicole. Wait, I'm like, I could go a, a lot of words. Ask me one or two is really, really hard. I'm a motor mouth queen. Um, <laughs> Do you mean like actually in front of Tableau or just like ideating in the back of your Let's head? say in front of Tableau. Yeah, in front of Tableau. Okay, because if we're doing like Queen's Gambit style, I can close my eyes and see the Tableau board. <laughs> and also very, very convenient. 
Um, so in terms of actually sitting, I don't know, Nicole, Diego, you feel this way, but I feel like I'm getting less and less time available to devote to actually building in front of Tableau desktop. So now I'm just like constantly ideating. And so then I like lock in for these build sessions that are maybe like two, three hours, three, maybe four five times a week during the qualifier window. But then I'm just like in my head, like doing all the Queen's Gambit style developing. So I'm sorry, that's not one of two words, but I'm gonna say <laughs> in front, probably like 30, 40, but like also time, I'm very bad at time management on this front. I just like keep closing my eyes and I see it in my sleep and in the shower. So yeah. <laughs> that's my answer. And it's not one to two answers. My bad. <laughs> we can see your time, great time management right here. <laughs> incredible. Two words, nope. <laughs> 85 words. <laughs> oh, I think building, building slash pulling data last year was probably 40 to 50 hours. It is not like a, it's not a just go and, and, and build something in a day. Um, but yeah, to Emily's point, a lot of like offline sketching and laying things out and redoing it. But yeah, between data and that probably 40 to 50. Yeah, for me it was probably, I spent like, you know, the the last week kind of doing it, but the main thing was actually finding the data uh, from different places, uh, you know, the, the wine data, then it was an opportunity as well to use Tableau Prep as well. So I haven't used it much, so kind of bringing a lot of stuff and that took me a lot more than actually, you know, sitting down and, and building the beast. That said, I wish I had put more time. Uh, I got like the last kind of three hours before the deadline, kind of like changing colors at four in the morning. Um, so yeah, uh, I definitely, if I'm going to take part this year, I'm probably going to try to spend more than a couple of weeks now. All right. So we, we got an if. So are the three of you going to, and I, I, Diego, I accept your if, but <laughs> Uh, is, so, and Emily, it's, I know it's your your year off, but you've got great <laughs> momentum with three top ten finishes. <laughs> like, what is what what are your percentage that you're going to enter this year? Are we doing the same order? Same order. Or, Two words. Same. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Um, I do have an idea. I have built my data set. Um, it's involving a TV show, so I am like on the final two seasons of the rewatch. Um, but I have a promising data set. I have an idea. I'm trying not to psych myself out because the reason I take that off year mark is because I psych myself out. Um, I've psyched myself out in previous years, um, being like, oh my God, I have to repeat greatness. And shout out to Nicole who's on this panel because I confided in this kind of like, I psych myself out every time. And she told me at Tableau Conference this year about how she, just goes into Iris being like, I'm going to focus on this specific feature. So for me, it's a yes. Hopefully I make it to the finish line. And the reason why I'm trying to break my off cycle this year is because one, the topic is really dear to me and a close friend of mine. So no matter what it looks like, she's going to love it. And then number two, I'm really trying to focus on the new tablet features. So, and if I make it in the top 10, amazing. And if I don't, it just wasn't my year. And that's how the story goes. That's and right. it's cool. Mm. So, right. Diego, yes. Diego, how strong is your if? Uh, no, I, I think it's probably 90% that I'll, I'll participate. It will depend if I manage to find the date. And if I don't find it, I've, I'm able to like pivot relatively quickly uh, and not panic, you know. Uh, but I have all the intentions and, um, well, I also, yeah, I think it's because of my work, I kind of have to lead by example. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I, I will unless everything fails. <laughs> All right. And Nicole? I, I'm like, I'm getting through my data set. So hopefully as long as we don't have more disasters or anything, I'm in Atlanta, so we're a little oh, fun right now. <laughs> but like, it's, it's a pretty strong, like, we can All get right. through it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Because how crazy would it be if the three of you ended up the finalists? Don't freaking look out. She just said she's going to enter again. <laughs> I feel 
<laughs> you know me. I, I don't. I don't like to add pressure to anybody. You know. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess one last question from Mark and I is: any last words of encouragement for those who are either entering or maybe thinking about entering, but not sure if they they if it's worth it, if they should. Yeah, words of encouragement from, from all three of you. I can go and I'm gonna stick to the plot, which is one of my key Iron Biz tips. Please just try to stick to the plot of your biz um, in development. And I'm gonna focus on what comes after. If you do enter, no matter what happens, you have a new viz that's on your portfolio and you just never know where that viz you submit for iron viz could go yeah it could go to top 10 it could go to even the top three potentially but that's such a really hard thing to wish and want and kind of unfair on your art piece to put that really high expectation because there's so many different outcomes that can come by just entering and putting in like real life story um you know i didn't make it to the finals, but my biz ended up winning one of my first busies at the 2024 Tableau Conference. I won Biz of the Year for my entry. Um, when I entered in 2020, I ended up using my entry to talk a lot in the interview for the for the role I'm currently at. Like you just never know. You never know your I'm like one of my inspirations for my idea right now that I'm building is someone's biz from 20, 2022. And his entry didn't make it into the top 10. And like, I can't wait to tell him like, hey, once it's all done, because I can't like, hopefully I make it um, once it's all done to be like, hey, by the way, like, I don't know if you know, but I've always loved that entry you did in 2022. And it was actually like a really foundational for my entry in 2024, in 2025. Like you just, you don't know how you're gonna pay it forward, how you're gonna inspire someone, what it could come out of by just entering. So I just, I wish you all to just dive and no matter the outcome you win regardless. Um, yeah, I guess I echo a lot of what Emily says. So instead of giving a lot of word of encouragement, maybe a tip of something that I've been using at work, a lot of people I would say is time, what they say is like, oh, you know, I don't have time for, for Iron Beast, um, especially with a lot of work. And something that I started using at work is getting a sponsorship kind of from my manager, you know, sometimes we want to go to Tableau conference, we ask like, oh, try to get a sponsorship and we say everything that the company is going to get if they allow me to, to go. Well, I'm doing the same. If you give me time to build Iron Beast at work, then at the end of the month, I'll organize a webinar. I'll tell you all the best practices that I did, why I did all my design and that way try to free some time so I can, you know, at work as well, uh, work on Iron Beast because it's true. It, it does take time, uh, but it's very rewarding. I mean, my Iron Beast is my my only Beast of the day that I have is, is my Iron Beast, um, but also is is probably my favorite business. It's the one that you end up putting a lot more time and passion and, and then you get a cool pin. So what else could you want? I, I love the strategy about getting sponsorship from work and using it as professional development and then actually paying it forward to the rest of your, your team. I love that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have to find time to, to do it. So have to, to think of strategies. Yeah. I think, you know, Emily and Diego said it a lot, you know, it really is, it's a great portfolio piece. You know, if you want, it goes far beyond Iron Viz. Um, I had a thought and I lost it. That's the way my day is going right now. Um, oh, the whole community participates, right? So even if you don't play top 10, which is a lot of pressure to put on yourself, um, you're going to like see this community just come together and really offer those feedback. Sarah Bartlett does her feedback initiative and it's a way to also network and meet a lot more people. You know, my first two didn't get top 10, but I could build on it every year. I was building my skill sets and I was building my network by just talking to people, talking iron biz, um, and that network has just pushed me way beyond, you know, it helps me at work. It helps me everywhere. So it's, as you said, it goes beyond what you expect. Yeah. One, 100%. <laughs> like Sarah Bartlett back in, it was either 2016 or I think it was 2017, um, was one of the first people that reached out to me or that when I called for feedback and she's a dear friend now and 
you know, there's a whole host of people that fall into that category. So if nothing else, that widening of your, your circle and your network, and that's, that's worth it for me. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, uh, I think it is time to thank the panel so much for your, uh, sharing of your inspiration and if you want to be there on the main stage for iron viz high-fiving andy and arshana as you come on stage partying with your sue visitors and impressing the judges the first step is the feeder competition so find those data sets uh we've got a ton of resources here um arshana what do you what what can you say? What can you give the audience? <laughs> I think it, I think it's all been said. There are so many resources already out there, but the biggest one is our own community. It's the people, not necessarily like this list of links that are going to help you work on your qualifier entry and hopefully like build that confidence to actually hit hit submit at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. And that's the thing I always remind people here, especially if you're new, if this is your first time entering, understand that the community just wants to hold you up and make you better. So asking questions, asking for feedback, all of that stuff is just community building. And we really do want to see everybody succeed because like we've said, you either win or you learn. You cannot lose participating in Iron Viz. So with that, what do people need to do? They need to submit your qualifier entry by the 31st of October at tableau.com slash iron dash viz, um, or just Google iron viz. <laughs> All righty. I think, I think that's, that's us. That's it. We need <laughs> it. Adrian and Alyssa, I know they've been answering a lot of the questions in the chat, but I think that's us. Yeah. Let's say, uh, Katie or Alyssa, are there any questions that we want to answer live? Yes. Looking in the Q&A, um, we have a couple questions. Um, let's see. I guess this is mostly to the panelists. Um, there was a question that I can, I can kind of combine two of these. Um, do you ever have any difficulty sleeping while competing in Iron Biz, being kept up with all the ideas bouncing around? And then kind of how do you balance your work life, your personal life, and Iron Biz? If, if any of you guys, maybe Emily, if you want to give a quick answer about that and then <laughs> the next one. I feel like someone should go first so I can like follow the tone. <laughs> um, so yes, I do. As I told you all, I can close my eyes and I just see the desktop and I can just move things around. So that definitely happens when I'm trying to sleep and I'm in the shower or I'm just cooking. Um, I did this, when I entered in 2020, I was very bad about it. Like, because we were quarantining, I was very self-isolating. So I was just like nonstop working on it. But as time went on and my process got better, I had to learn to balance. And I implemented a rule last year that worked really great for me was if I made any commitments prior to the window opening, I can't back out of it. So like my pottery class, I go to, I work out or like I had concert tickets. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't back out of it. And I would try to reframe it as like a necessary break. And some of my best ideas came from while I was just like following the commitments that I made prior to October. I also use that to kind of force me to stop. It's very helpful that the deadline's on October 31st. I hope it stays that way because it means I have to be done by before October 1st to go have fun with my friends for Halloween. Um, so I would say that try to reframe what you would see as like, oh, it's gonna get in the way of me finishing as like, no, I need to work around this. And you know, sometimes Ayurveda can be this really beautiful creative reset. And I think that's part of the reset you need. Um, so yeah, that's my answer on that. And it's kind of under 200 <laughs> words. <laughs> I'm really trying. <laughs> I'm going to get you a shirt that just says TLDR. <laughs> TLDR, lots of drafts, all her little comedic bits. You, you know, you lose that with the two word answer. <laughs> 
Um, for me, I mean, the, the bouncing ideas, I think one key thing is just trying to define early what's going to be your plan and do it and then kind of stick to it. I guess similar to what Emily was saying, stick to the plot lag. Um, and then as well, kind of enjoying it and kind of thinking that this is more like a fun experience instead of like, you know, life and death. So don't overly stress. I mean, the worst that's going to happen is that, okay, you're not going to be on a stage, which actually probably you're going to be grateful when you, if you go to Tableau Conference. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, try to, to enjoy the process. And regarding balancing with work, I guess is what I was saying before, like try to get some kind of sponsorship at work uh, that you can use some time there to, to work on your iron bees. Yeah, and just finding a schedule that works and like Emily said, stick with it. You know, you're gonna have inspiration whenever, but if you kind of have these windows where you're like, this is my build time and then it's the rest of my lifetime, like it'll help you not get overwhelmed. And thank you guys. We have a couple other questions. So mm -hmm. someone asked, does the dashboard have a size slash dimension limit? Uh, I, yeah, I say I'll, I'll just answer this for the three of them. Cause if you look at their three visas, uh, <laughs> Emily's and Nicole's are both very long form, but Nicole's is a, a, a left to right scroller where Emily's is, is a vertical. Mm -hmm. uh, Diego's is very tall as well. Um, I've seen ones that will fit on a PowerPoint slide, you know, so whatever your imagination and creativity, you know, drive you towards, there are no limits as far as the canvas size. The only limits are the ones imposed by Tableau itself, which I think, what is it like? 10,000. 10,000. 10, 10, 10, 10, <laughs> yeah. Nicole and I have struggled with that limit. <laughs> <It's 10, 000. laughs> but I think there are ways around it, but I'm like, I'm not going to figure that out. We're going to stick to 10. Yeah. And then one other question, are we allowed to use dashboard extensions? Mark and Archana, if you want to chime in. You know, I'm not sure on the rules on that. Um, so let us let us find that out and we'll post it to socials, I think. Uh, um, I, would, I would lean towards probably not, but uh, as I say, I know this came up as a question after last year's iron viz because of the whole viz extension being added to the product yeah. um so i think that's a, a conversation that we sh we're still having internally we don't want to make it too easy to make a sankey chart do we <laughs> <laughs> i thought my blood sweat and tears trying to figure that out last year <laughs> <laughs> so all right but yeah we'll, we'll get that answer out perfect we will follow up with that one and um, this could be a final question as we're coming up on time, but this is, I guess, for the panelists, if you wanna just do a really quick answer for this. Um, how long did it take you to go from entry-level data analyst to IronViz finalist? Maybe when was your first Tableau dashboard? If you remember. And Emily, you don't have to go first this time. How about, <laughs> how about Nicole? <laughs> oh, great. Um... I, so I had been doing Tableau for three or four years before I joined the community. Um, but I will say like my learning before joining the community before iron biz was just very slow and linear. And the moment I joined and I did iron biz the first year I joined, it just skyrocketed my career skyrocketed. So, um, you know, I went four years pretty much where I was at. And then within the last four years, I've, I'm now, you know, I got a new job. Just feel like I really did take off, got the top 10. So like it, it went pretty fast once, once you did take the time. And that's what Iron Viz is great for is taking that time to just hone in and focus and get the design inspiration that you can then take back, back to work as well. Um, yeah, for me, I, my background is social science and public policy. I started with data and 2018 and my top 10 iron beast was 2020 the first one in, in health uh, so yeah it's you, you it's not really about time uh, all my charts in all my iron beasts are just bar charts and line charts and maps 
uh, which you can learn in a couple of hours. And if you think of like the winner of Iron Bees uh, the year before last one, uh, also was uh, someone relatively new to Tableau. So yeah, it's, it's not about time, I would say. Yeah, I agree also. Um, yeah. For my background, my background's in classical flute performance. That's what my degree is actually in, fun fact. Um, and, but I landed my first like data, true data analytics job in 2016. That's when I got introduced to Tableau. And similar to Nicole, it was like a pretty stagnant, like I was learning, I was trying to troubleshoot as much as I could and I would be online like lurking through the forums for help and support. But in terms of Iron Man, like I didn't enter until 2020. So I had been using Tableau at least at work in a professional setting for about four years before I finally entered. Um, and honestly, like it gave me an in to at least engage more online. Like I'm just a lurker by nature, <laughs> like an online lurker, not like a stalker. I really, <laughs> I hope, I hope no one thinks that. Um, but so I would say that, and just like Nicole, it just really skyrocketed. Like it helped me feel comfortable asking people I've never met before to be like, hey, can you yeah. look at my biz? And like, what do you think about it? And like, I'll look at your biz too. And like, this is so nice. Um, and I, and 2016, I was an entry level data analyst. Um, so for con, so that can kind of, yeah. It's really not about time. It's timing, but it's not, everyone's timing is different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much. I think we are at time. So with that, don't forget to submit your qualifier visits by October 31st, and we will get this recording out soon. Thanks all. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.